this is a good one because I haven't seen it just yet, but this title was obviously hilarious. Um, as you guys know, there's a... I don't know how to say this. I'm, I'm a bit conflicted. There's a growing sentiment around people. There's a growing sentiment out there that people think Bert is going to die soon because of how fat he is and because of how much he drinks and how much he eats. But in my opinion, I think it's a bit weird that people are kind of trying to predict when he's going to die because it kind of is a bit weird, right? It's a little bit macabre. It's a bit much. But it's also, I don't think, um, honest because most people in their lives have known people like Bert who overindulge in booze and out in booze and food and they live long lives I know many people in my local pub who support fucking West Ham who look like they've got fucking a turtle shell underneath their fucking a tortoise how you fucking pronounce that shit under their fucking belly because of how much fucking booze they drink and they are perfectly okay some of them are way older than fucking Bert so to suggest that he might be the one that you might cr you know bend over and die because he looks like a savloy he's about to explode doesn't really make any sense so it's a bit weird but anyway that aside um people think he's gonna die soon and um, and obviously but you know clearly a functioning alcoholic a bit of an addict as well um he kind of knows that it's a current theme around him and obviously with tom getting skinny again he's now decided to do a bit of a challenge and prove everybody wrong and this is the challenge he's doing courtesy of this video title can you see it it says 21 day sobriety and keto so Bert is now deciding to do a 21 day um, cleanse to get his body right, which is hilarious because if he's the way we think he is and he's a bit of an addict, he's probably going to do this 21 days, probably do it clean. And then as soon as he's over, he's going to fucking drink himself silly anyway, which is going to negate all the 21 days of good work he did previously. So it's kind of, you know, typical addict, extreme behavior of going like from one extreme to the other. Because and imagine as well, like you're trying to negate what more than two decades of just pure unadulterated gluttony and indulgence and think that 21 days is going to make up for it that's a little bit a little bit naive and dumb but hey let's watch the video let's see what Bert had to say day 21 on keto day 21 no booze no sugar no carbs and i feel fantastic do you believe him he said he's on 21 days now with no booze and what no this has to be a joke i'm hesitant to even say that i drove down my street today and i saw the trees like i've never seen them now i don't know if that's the fat going to my brain or the fat leaving my body or the fact that i have no booze to cloud it but I feel phenomenal. If you're thinking about a diet, I have to say I'm actually pretty much carnivore. Like I just don't have a lot of time for vegetables. I'm just eating steak and feeling totally satiated. I do not get hungry. I'm not hungry. Right now I've, I've been fasted for at least 18 hours. I am not hungry. I feel good. I have a ton of energy. I will say that I didn't have energy when I first started this workout regimen, but that left and I'm taking exogenous ketones every day, probably twice a day before a workout and the middle of the day, like when I go to podcast and I feel phenomenal. Dude, there was a day, it was a Saturday. It was like my first, it was seven days into keto and I fell asleep in the backyard on a couch that's like not even a comfortable couch passed out like i was so high i could not keep my eyes open i had zero energy and then one day that shifted it shifted in the gym i was doing shoulder taps and for i was and they she had me doing 20 and i was like i could only do 10 at a time and i get pretty winded and i did 20 in a row and i was like shit right now my energy levels through the fucking roof and and i and i'm telling you zero booze zero sugar zero carbs pretty much steak and fish that's it. And a couple hot dogs every now and then. No buns. I will tell you, dinner parties are tedious. When you are in keto or ketosis and not drinking, man, it's like they don't stop pouring wine for themselves. You're just sitting there going, for real? We're going to do another one? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Open another bottle of wine. It's 1030. It's cool. No, no, no. I didn't want to read a book about Johnny Carson when I got home. I'm going to be tired as fucking shit. What's that? I'm sorry. 
The kids are here. I can't go outside and smoke pot. Oh, cool. No, this is great. I'm having such a good time. Talk to me more about how suicide is an option. I am 100% more present. I am 100% in the moment. I, I don't know if I don't know if it's real. If my daughters see that I am more present, they say I'm more present. They also don't know I've been smoking a lot of marijuana. So like, I think I'm just more present because I'm high, and marijuana gives me empathy. I did talk to Rogan about marijuana, and he was telling me about when you smoke too much and you get panics. That's always been my fear, and he said, "No, that's a life lesson for you to remember. You need to be a better person." <laughs> and last night at Metallica, I was hitting that vape pen. You know, just. I wanted, they were getting ready to close, and I wanted to be high when they fucking hit the fucking, the big one. Give me fuel, give me fog, give me everything does I, and I went, <laughs> and all of a sudden I realized how small I was in SoFi, and SoFi looked so fucking big, and everyone had their fucking phones on, and their light, light, and I was like, what the fuck, and I started feeling the panic creep in, and I leaned into Rogan, and I said, this is a reminder of how to be a better person, and I, then I thought, whoa, you're killing it right now. <laughs> anyway, so he had to he had to go to a Metallica concert and sit in probably seats that cost a thousand dollars plus <laughs> to be reminded to be a good person. <laughs> he could only he could only have empathy with the world around him and the people that he shares a planet with after enjoying a sold out tour, a sold out performance on one of the greatest heavy metal bands and live bands of all time that's the only time it hit him yeah this is why i should be a good person <laughs> honestly what a, what a crock of shit you're not drinking you're present with your kids you're grounded you just took everyone to Metallica. You're taking them again Sunday. You bought all the kids gift bags. You're a great dad. And I was like, you're a great dad. And you're 50. And you're, well, your wife's 53. And you're at fucking Metallica. And you're cool. You didn't get like some fucking expensive box tickets. You bought regular tickets. You're a cool dude. That's the weed who's talking to me. Does anybody, like, no one else probably thinks more of Bert than Bert, man. Does, do regular people think this of themselves? Like, sit back and look at themselves and think, I'm a great dad. <laughs> Whenever I hear people talking, especially young parents, they're always doubting whether or not they're actually good parents. They're always fucking self-conscious about whether or not they're doing things wrong. Like, they're nervous. Like, that's all you hear, right? You're just anxious all the time. You're not sure if you're doing things right. You're not sure if you're going to fuck up your kid. But this guy has prime confidence in his parenting, prime confidence in himself. Everything is prime. He does everything correctly. Even though he sat on podcasts himself and complained and cried about how he missed most of his kids growing up, um, you know, like childhood and shit because he was out on tour making money, allegedly. Um but yet now he sits there and says, yeah, I'm a great dad, man. I bought them gifts. They get to go to the schools they want. They get to drive whatever cars they want. I'm a great dad because I can provide. <laughs> it never, there's never any self-doubt. It's all just, as long as I can get them things, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm sure they're happy with that also. But um, do I believe that he did 21 days of keto and, you know, and sobriety? No. But loves a treat. Uh, but is you know had been known to have zero self control. Um, I just don't think it's possible. I just think it's annoying to keep sharing his psychosis, his anxiety, his worry with us. I honestly don't give a fuck. I'm a little bit disturbed by the people out there who are trying to guess when he dies. I think that's a bit weird. But I also don't care. I've got my own issues. I've got my own struggles. I've got my own things to deal with. I don't give a fuck about this adult baby trying to figure out how to be a good person in the middle in, in, in his 50s, trying to figure out how to do things with some level of self-control, trying to understand the fucking, um, you know, the idea of doing things in moderation. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Really fucking don't give a fuck. But just leave us alone. You don't need to keep sharing your journey with us. It's annoying. It's like it's like someone you know, like an old family friend, they keep tagging you into the pictures of their fucking couch to 5K training. They keep tagging you on all the runs that they get doing so you can keep seeing their progress. Bro, just run. 
do your thing i don't care i'm not keeping an, uh, an eye on your progress i'm not trying to make you accountable just do your 5k you don't need to keep tagging me so i can see what you're doing after a moment i'm gonna keep if i can do it i'm gonna unlike unlike it i might even report it for spam if you keep fucking tagging me leave me alone you know that's what it kind of feels like leave us alone that's what i have to say if you get sober you get sober do i believe you no but if you did it congratulations <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from us anyway 